Welcome back to a Not a Blend tutorial, and today we're going to be looking at procedural animation with noise modifiers. So we're all kind of familiar with adding keyframes to objects in Blender, but there's something you can actually do in a graph editor where you take your different transforms and you can add these modifiers to them, like noise, for example. And just doing that, we created these animations. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in this tutorial. Just these two examples. We're going to have these balls kind of going up and down like this through this kind of lattice here. And then we'll just make a torus kind of spinning like this. I think this is a fantastic beginner tutorial because if you're intimidated with animation, this could be a fantastic way for you to do some dead easy animation just using a tool that's already in Blender that's gonna kind of do it for you. Now, obviously this has limitations, but there are gonna be a lot of times where this can really help you add some extra detail to your animated scene. So let's jump in and learn about procedural noise animation in Blender. So let's start by deleting everything in the scene. And we're gonna go Shift A, let's just add in a mesh object, we're gonna add in a UV sphere. And I'm just gonna go S, 0.2 and hit Enter just to scale it down a bit. And now I wanna do something. I wanna animate this going up and down on the Z, right? Now I could do that the traditional way where I just kind of animate it over time along my key timeline like so, up and down, right? And this is how we, most of us understand, you know, doing animation in Blender, but we really wanna approach this um, with a modifier. We wanna work procedurally here with the animation. So let's delete those keyframes. A simple thing we can do is come to something like frame one, right? And we can place our object where we want it. And then we can go I, and we can insert a location keyframe, right? Now that we have that location keyframe inserted, we can come over here to where our dropdown is for the timeline. We can change our window here to the graph editor. Once we're in the graph editor, we can pull up here. We have the sphere selected. And we're gonna see here is the animation um, information here. So for example, we got the sphere action. We can drop go to the drop down and we can see here we have the object transform and under there we have the type to transform. So now currently we're just seeing the X, Y, and Z locations because we pressed I and we inserted a location. If we had gone for a scale or rotation or all of them combined, we would see over here X, Y, Z rotation, scale, and so on, okay? But over here, we're just looking at the location. So this is very straightforward. We want this to go up and down in the Z. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna to come to the object transform. We're gonna click on the Z location. You can see it's now active. The other ones are gray. And we can now come over here to the side and you're gonna see these properties here. So if you press N, you'll see it if it's not there. And you're gonna go here to modifiers. And over here, we have these procedural options. So we can go to the dropdown. You can use built-in functions, cycles, um, limits, things like that. But what we're gonna be looking at here is the most common one that's usually useful to us, and that is noise, right? So now we can see along our timeline here, these are the frames running along here. If we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this is going up and down, right? But at the moment, it's happening really fast, and that may be something you're looking for but the reason that is happening is because first of all, our scale is really small. So if we increase the scale, you're gonna see these little curves here become wider. So it's more spread out. So for example, if we took this to a scale of 45, now if we go to frame one, hit the space bar, we're gonna see this is a much more gradual up and down. So that is our scale, our frequency kind of. And then the strength here, just determines the distance that that's gonna go. So if we bump this up to, you know, like four, then we're gonna go very high and very low, okay? So between the scale and the strength, that gives you a ton of control. So I'm gonna go with two here, I think should be fine. And a nice smooth value of about 42, I think should work fine. So now we have this sphere going up and down in a very kind of controlled way, yet it's random and it just looks really cool. We didn't have to do any animation, right? Also, if you wanted to, you could click on these other ones and also go and add the same modifier. For now, we'll just stick to the Z location. Let's do something with this though. So I'm gonna just come here back to my timeline. I'm gonna come to frame one, and I'm gonna enable this thing over here called Auto King. And now I'm gonna go Shift D X, and I'm just gonna move this over by typing in 0.5 and I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so shift D X 0.5. Then I'm just gonna go shift R and I'm gonna repeat that action till we have one, two, three, four, five of these little spheres. And now I'm gonna turn off auto keying, but we're gonna notice here, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, 
they're all kind of doing this at the same time. So all we have to do is now select one of them. Let's quickly go back into our graph editor. And we have something here now we're gonna look at this, the offset and the phase. So for example, I can come here and give it an offset of one. And now if we go to frame one and hit the space bar, it's a bit of an offset, but we can also come here to the phase and change that. I'm gonna change it to four. So now this one is out of sync with the others. It's a bit more random. And you can go through and do the same thing over here. You can just go and muck around with it. You can go even to the negatives. I might go negative three on this one. And this way, you know, maybe I'll give this 12. Now they're a little bit more random. Grab this one over here, maybe make it 0.5. And that's a really cool way to kind of randomize this. So now um, I'm gonna quickly go Shift A, just as a quick little example, add in a plane. I'm just gonna scale it down and then press I to inset it. X, and I'm just gonna delete that face. And then I'm just gonna to go to my modifiers, add modifier, search and type in array. And I'm gonna give this a count of five. And then I'm just gonna tab back out and I'm just gonna scale this till it kind of matches up over here like this. Looks about right, I might go to the top view. And in here I can scale this inside bit up a bit. There we go, and I'm gonna just extrude this down have these little boxes and now we have this kind of cool thing here and I think what I did I selected these faces here and I just went E to extrude S and Z and then I just went E to extrude and then Alt S just to scale in on the normals and then I also just gave that a bevel modifier and then I just messed around with the amount and then increase the segments. So that was kind of a cool little thing that I made earlier, just messing around with this. And then you can just give smooth shading to everything. And now we have this cool little example. So this would be something you could do with a nice little motion graphic scene. Um, just a ton of fun. And we've done the animation here completely procedurally. So let's look at another example. Let's quickly go Shift A. Let's go to our mesh options, add in a torus. I'm gonna move this guy over, right click and go shade smooth, maybe scale it down a bit. And let's go over to frame one. Um, let's just go I with this torus selected. Let's add in a rotation this time. Come to our transforms here and let's just go to the Y rotation. This time let's go to our modifier, go to add modifier. We're gonna add in some noise. And as we saw before, it's gonna be all over the place. Let's take that scale, bump it up to not something like 50 and let's take that strength up to maybe like 40. So now we get this nice rotation. Maybe that's a bit too much. I might go with 12 on the strength. There we go. So now we get these nice big scales here. And that's how easy it is to use noise modifiers in Blender um, for animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little beginner's tutorial and I'll see you next time for some more stuff.